And the civil rights struggle started long before I came, but I remember understanding the implications of it in my life as a young girl. When Dr. King and the leaders in the civil rights movement got started early on, they really were focused on trying to make sure that we could go to public facilities and be served. And I actually marched with Dr. King myself because I came up in a civil rights activist family. They were the seed to the civil rights movement as we know it. In the 60s, I think there were so many just in-your-face issues, whether it was Jim Crow or, you know, access to good housing or, you know, Brown versus the Board of Education and schools. There were so many things. So that was the group that integrated this society, integrated this country in terms of the, the social aspects of it. We can now sit on the front of the bus. We can now drink from the water fountains. You don't have the blatant segregation and racism and discrimination that my grandfather's generation experienced. As the movement matured, it became increasingly evident that without having access to economic prosperity, we really could not participate in the society. I know Jesse Jackson talked about it's not black America or white America, but it's green. That now it's more financial discrimination, it's the haves and the have-nots. So the next stage of civil rights is economic rights, full participation in our economy. What do we do about this problem? We keep kicking the can down the road, or we keep putting bandages on broken legs. Right now, we're all pawns in this pseudo-capitalist society. I say pseudo-capitalist because it's not true capitalism. True capitalism actually brings about competition. We recognize that people of color have a harder time getting their ideas and that intention and that desire moved forward. Most small businesses don't survive five years. So that's the first barrier. And it doesn't matter whether you're black owned or woman owned, it's just a very, very high push to get beyond the first five years. The challenge of entrepreneurship is so important. Not being able to access capital was a huge barrier. And so if you don't have the confidence that people will, that they can make money with you, whatever it is you're doing, you won't get investment. And as a consequence, we have seen the wealth, you know, the disparity between the wealth and wealthy and the poor continue to grow pretty much unabated. The Dream Exchange offers us an opportunity to disrupt that system uh, so that now the players can also be small players, medium players. Part of the Dream Exchange promise is that it's going to help those businesses learn how to be the kind of company that will draw investors. And now you go to a true capitalist system where it's based on the product. Do you have a good product or service that can win over the day? What the Dream Exchange will do is level the playing field. If you bring good ideas to the table, we don't care what color you are. You're going to get them funded. Those companies that could not be traded, could not go to IPO prior to now, will have an opportunity to go to IPO. Because we are now helping majority of the companies to access capital that right now they cannot. This gives us an opportunity now to move back toward true capitalism, exactly the things that we say that this country is about. It just happens to be majority black owned, but it's just a stock exchange like the NASDAQ. Because when you have more competition, prices go lower, the cost of capital gets lower, there are more opportunities for flexibility, there are more options for black and brown businesses to consider when they're trying to grow their businesses. Because the Dream Exchange provides that vehicle. People say, oh, so it's like another Black Wall Street. I have to correct them because Greenwood and Tulsa and those other places, although they are significant and their achievements were grand, they really were more like Main Street. Why can't we have it all? Why can't we have the broadest array of financial solutions for businesses that want to grow? and be able to lift those who have been forgotten. It fills a gap, a needed gap, and it's gonna give more people access to capital and investment than in the history of our country. During the Civil Rights Movement, they did the best they could with what they were dealing with. But what's really gonna make a difference so that we have one America and one people and we don't focus so much on the color of your skin or your background or religion, is the financial knowledge. There are steps that can be taken to fix this problem that's been with us since the founding of this country. So I'm hopeful that we can just go forward from here and, and fix some of the things that need fixing. 
come to the Dream Exchange. We welcome you and we'd love to help.